everybody, it's Jennifer from Gentle Soaps and today we're going to be working with the liquid soaps which I'm so excited about. The liquid soaps are so versatile and you can make so many different products. Um, and the cold process liquid soap method is so easy. Um, if you're interested in that, just click on a link below. I'll have it down there in the description box on how to make your own cold process liquid soap. All right, so I've pre-measured 20 grams of methyl cellulose. And I measured it in this container, so it's not dirty, it's just got some of that. But I don't want it on the bottom, so I'm going to get as much of it out of there as possible. And I'm going to pour in glycerin. So I have a big gallon of glycerin here. There we go. Now I'm making enough so that I can do a quart or a gallon of methyl cellulose thickened soap at a time. All right, so we're going to put a little bit in there. And we're also going to put in a preservative. Hold on. All right, the preservative I'm going to be using today is Germabin 2. I've been using this one forever. Um, it's another paraben um, It's a combination of propylene glycol, diazinyl urea, and methyl paraben and propyl paraben. And so it's basically in the same kind of suspension, ready to use. Um, all right, so let's put in a mill of Germovin 2. Hold on, it's stuck. All right, so I'm going to use a sterile uh, method. Anytime you're working with water soaps, um, use preservatives. All right, so that's enough for this amount. Way more than enough. I used the high end of the spectrum on this. So just set that aside. I'll put that away. Alrighty, so I've got my stick blender. Alright, so I've got my little tiny one here. <clears throat> so once you get that much mixed in, pour in a little bit more. Now you can mix it with water, but it's going to be like jello. And I just like the glycerin because I'm incorporating it into products that um, need glycerin anyway. So this just saves me a step. And it doesn't actually thicken the glycerin up anything, any kind of weirdness. It's just the same. And I've used this method many times before. So this isn't something new. This is just my method of creating my own easy to use um, ingredients. So this is methyl cellulose and there are lots of places that carry it. I think Wholesale Supplies carries it, Brambleberry might carry it. I got this one from the cosmetic store. Pretty sure that the chemistry store has it in Florida. Just go up and down like a very thick latte here. Now I've got some soap ready that I'm getting ready to thicken right here. So I'll just show you really quick how that works. This is my Goldilocks body wash that I'm working on. And I generally, my company is small enough right now that I can just do custom orders for people. So um, I have a certain, if you go to my Etsy shop and you want body wash, you can click on the scent that you want and I'll make it fresh just for you. Got a stained bowl here. But, uh, so I'm going to put in a tablespoon. I'm using my kitty. I love my kitty. I'm going to put a tablespoon of this in. I 
And I've already added my scent and my colorant and my preservatives and everything into this soap. This cold process liquid soap that I've diluted by six. So now I'm gonna just disperse it with this little one. Now you can use your big hand blender. I wouldn't recommend it though because you end up with a lot more bubbles. I'm trying not to make it come up above the top and I'll move this out of the way. Now every soap I make is different so I start with a tablespoon of this concentration. So I use five grams per 100 mils. Actually, five grams per 50 mils of glycerin. And then I'll start with uh, a tablespoon of methyl cellulose for a liter of body wash at a 6 to 1 dilution, which is what we have here. And it's already got its fragrance in it and everything. But this will take some time to thicken up, so we'll just leave it, set it aside. It's not as fast acting as the Crothix, but it's still super duper nice. It's already starting to thicken up. Now I'll set this aside. For the next one, we're going to measure out some poly gel. Now the ICI for this is Carbapol EDT, I believe, 2020. All right, so we're going to start out. We're just going to make a small amount. And it, again, is a bag of powder. So if you're a soap maker, you better start labeling all your bags of powder because they're all very, very different. That's what this stuff looks like. It's whiter than the methyl cellulose. And, but it behaves in very much the same way. I'm just gonna, sorry about the noise. I'm just gonna pull some out so you can see it. My fork will work as well as anything. All right, so it's just like, almost looks like cornstarch. All right, so we're gonna measure out five grams. Again, this one acts very much like methyl cellulose. If you add water to it, it's going to kind of look like a really thick jello. All right, because these are um, polymers. That's what they are. So zero grams. I'm gonna put it a spoon here. Spoon. Forks are kind of hard to measure with. Right, I'm going to measure out five grams. Hope we need zero again. Let's get everything away from my scale. And five grams is very, very light, as you can see. It's not very much. So if you buy like a pound of it, like I did, it's going to last you a really long time. And this worked really well for thickening my lotion. So let's see how it does um, in a soap um, application. So I'm going to pour in, again, we're going to follow the same steps as we did for the methyl cell. So I'm just going to make less of it. Okay. So here comes the glycerin. Oops. because I haven't tested as, as, it as extensively, but we'll be showing this one um, if, it, if it works, it'll be up on my channel because you need all the options you can get when you're a um, handmade soap maker. Woo. Now this thing kicks up the, here, just hold on to the bottom and then you'll be fine. Wear a mask. not because I'm in the middle of this and it's really, I just can go to the side and I'm fine. Alright. See why I'm not doing it all in one go? I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. I don't know where that came from.
So don't don't get all worried. Just take it slow. Don't get in a rush. So thickening your soap, if you've given up on um, a 20% table salt solution like I have, you might want to try these. I absolutely love them. Prothix, I made like four liters of soap like yesterday because I just wanted to try out another scent and another scent and uh, they were just turning out so pretty and so fun. Uh, there's another product coming up that I'm going to make with that because it is a super duper thickener. Like it really does thicken up like nobody's business. And the last little bit, kind of like making icing. Now you want to write down your, um, how much you're using. So when you do your four, four ounce testing, like I usually do like two, a two cup thicken and work on it for a couple of days until I'm happy with um, what I've made and then go to a bigger quantity. You don't want to just throw all of this into your whole batch of liquid soap that you thinned out at once unless you know what you're doing, all right? I would hate for you to go to all that work and all that expense and have it not be what you wanted it to be. Just make sure you get all those little lumps. And there we have it. There's your polygel thickener. I may add a little more glycerin to this. If I do, I will measure it. But as long as it's uh, behaving itself and staying into this nice little paste, uh, we'll measure it out a teaspoon at a time or half a teaspoon then a teaspoon to two cups until we get the texture and the thickness that we want in our liquid soap. Now I just have one more thing I need to add to this. I need to add a preservative and again going with the Germavin 2. I have the other one out here that just like walked off on me though. I've been using that one almost um, exclusively. Alright. See how thick that is? So thick. Alright. There we go. Put that away. we're going to mix again. And it's pretty thick, so we're going to probably have to dilute this um, again. See, do you see why you're, you play with things to see if they're going to work? Um, yeah, so we're going to dilute this again. I'll be right back. Now you could just use it like this. But um, I want something that's easy to mix in, so I'm going to thin it down a bit more. This is just a personal preference. Um, right. There we go. And I'll leave this for 24 hours. And as long as it's a paste that I think I can incorporate easily into my formulations, I'll leave it as it is. But if it turns to flubber, then we will start over. Because nobody wants chunky bits in their formulations. Okay, I'm going to work this with the spoon. Like this is going to be a monster room on its own. Have to figure out. That's all with just five. 
five grams. So I know this one's going to stay this consistency. That's the methyl cellulose. But I like how clear this is, and I want to give it a shot in my formulations. But I've got to make it in a way that uh, I can easily use it because the powder is really hard to work with. I'm not even sure where I got this. I haven't been able to find my supplier. So um, this is just kind of one of those fun things. just start playing with. So I'm going to leave that overnight, but that, see that's too thick for me to really um, put into a soap. <laughs> that's not going to, and that's what it was before. We'll see if this thinner this increase in glycerin has made it easier to work with or not. Might have to get out the big blender. So we have the methyl cellulose on the left and the polygel on the right. I then added some water to that and you'll see it in use in the next video using polygel. All right, so I've got about 15 um, ounces. So we're going to switch your grams, which is 430, which is a lot easier for math. If I was doing 1%, uh, that would be uh, 44 um, grams. However, I'm going to go on the low end of the point. So I'm going to add about 20 grams, 0.5 actually, somewhere in the middle. So we're going to zero it again. And then I'm going to add five. Now do this a little bit at a time because five grams is not very much. And if you've got a postal scale like mine, there we go. That was five right there. All right. Now we're going to mix this and add some of my pre-made gel. Um, I did do a video on this, it's in my blooper reel, um, because it doesn't mix really well with um, the, <laughs> the glycerin. I it, my, my whole machine went everywhere and I had to mix it by hand. So it's kind of funny to mix the poly gel. It was five grams of poly gel and about three ounces of glycerin. And then I added water to make it thick enough and then of course added my preservative once my water was finished being added. So we're just going to blend this a little bit. You always add your preservative while it's cool um, and since I'm doing everything cold here that probably does contribute to some of the, the issues that I have. So we're going to add a full teaspoon of my five gram, five gram blend here. And I think there's a total, this is just for my daughter, so I'm not gonna wear gloves. Sorry guys. Just gonna do that. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> now the glycerin is just gonna add some nice emollients. tablespoons of my gel. Okay, so I had to add another two tablespoons of my glycerin-based uh, poly 
sorbate solution. And now I'm going to add some pearlizer. Put a tablespoon to this. Give it a little sparkle. It's also going to help to thicken it as well. So give that a little playing with soap to the to work with. Um, it's a 1 to 8 percent ratio just like the crow thicks. Um, I would suggest rather than working from the powder like we started at the beginning of this that you just watch my blooper reel and see how to make the gel first um, with the glycerin. It'll add uh, wonderful emollients to your soap anyway and um, you can get that kind of texture from the poly gel in thickening up your natural soap formulations. All right, there we go. So there is my straw, uh, sherbet, raspberry lemon cherry sherbet, fruity sherbet, uh, pearlized liquid soap made from cold process liquid liquid soap and water, and a polymer, another polymer based thickener. Now you can, there are several different ways to use these products. I choose to work cold, um, but there's a hot phase and a cold phase and a mixing phase. And I'm just impatient. I want to know what it's going to be like immediately. And if the product doesn't work for me that way, then I don't use the product. So I'm sure there's another way to use these products. Check out, um, something monkey. She's awesome. Um, Monkey pick monkey. No, that's, that's no. Anyway, she's got an icon of monkey and she does amazing chemistry things with her soap. Um, if you're, if you're going to get into surfactants and detergents, it's time to start studying her site. Um, that's what I'm doing because I'm, I brought in a few of the products that she's recommended to start playing with and hopefully we'll have some, um, some new things to show you in the next year, um, that are super duper fun. Um, here's, another a sneak peek at what we're working on right now this is um, eco packaging with my liquid soap concentrate in it this has been sitting for a little bit of dye on it sitting testing for the last two and a half weeks um, so expect that to be coming out how to use your existing soap makers uh, materials I, obviously I need to work on my technique um, but that's coming up soon too. So if you want to learn how to do this or any of my other projects, tune in. All right. Uh, until next time, this is Jennifer signing off and, uh, happy soaping.